compound interest. So today we're going to be talking about different ways that we can grow money using a formula. We can calculate it. So for example, if we're going to put some money into a bank account, there is an interest rate. So you earn interest based on how much money is put into that account. Another consideration of how much money you make is based on how often it is compounded. So is the interest just calculated once a year, so annually, or is it semi-annually, so twice a year, or is it monthly? Uh, so there's different ways that you can compound interest. The formula is A equals P, 1 plus R over N, times nt. Now we need to know what all these mean. So p is equal to that initial amount invested. r is the annual rate of interest. So interest is always given annually, but you could compound it multiple times a year. So n is the number of times it's compounded. T is the amount of time it's invested, and that's in years. And A is the balance after t years. So our n values could be daily, so 365, could be semi-annual, that would be 2, quarterly, that would be 4, and monthly. These are the most common. Another type of interest formula is called continuously compounded. So it's not at increments such as monthly, quarterly, but it, the money is constantly earning interest on itself. That formula is A equals P E R T. Now E is a number. You can think of it similar to pi. Pi is a number 3.14. E is also a number. It's 2.718. So it has a value attached to it and it is a button on your calculator and I will show that to you. So in this case P is that initial amount. It's a P because it's principal really. R again is that annual rate. T is time in years, and in this case, A is the balance after T years. And I didn't mention this before, but I should. This is always written as a decimal. So for example, if you're told that the interest is 4%, in the calculation, you'll put 0 0.04. Often formulas that have exponents in them are compound interest, continuously interest, um, but also exponential growth and decay. So the growth of bacteria and the rate at which it grows. So a formula for that, oops, and not is our initial amount. R is our rate. T is our time. And N is the total after T time. So we could be told that we have a certain number of bacteria that we start with the bacteria grows at a specific rate and we want to know how much bacteria we have after a certain amount of time. We could also be told that the rate um, isn't a growth but it's a decay. 
So that means that it would change to a negative sign in the equation. So if r is greater than zero, it's a growth. And if r is less than zero, it's a decay.